All right, guys, I wanted to talk about my, my big trailer here and uh, some changes that's gonna be coming to it and some uh, modifications that we've already begun with. You'll probably see right there. And uh, I wanna go over some of the things that I'm gonna be doing. And uh, we'll call this project, this old trailer. This, uh, this trailer here, I built back in, I, I believe it was 2004 or either 2005, somewhere in that range. I, bought, I, I built this trailer out of parts and pieces that were given to me by a, a friend of us. And he gave me most of the frame and then I added on the front two feet there, added some extra cross members in there and then I built the tongue on the front as well. And I mean, I, I built it, put the deck on it and it's, uh, it's seen better days. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been in the hands of several people and some things have happened to it. Things have gotten bent up, but it's a good, heavy, solid trailer and I wanted to go ahead and uh, put a little bit of money and time in this trailer since I built it because it's always been a great trailer and start using this one for equipment hauling and material hauling and things like that. All right, so let's begin with uh, what we've started and I'm gonna talk about some of the plans that I have for this trailer to uh, kind of bring it back to uh, spruce it up anyway. So what I have done, the uh, one of the things that I did to this trailer that I, that I, one of the main things I want to do this trailer is add brand new axles, uh, including brakes. So we, now we have two 7,000 pound axles on this thing, including brakes on each axle. All right, and we have brand new rims and tires, and these are 14 ply tires right here, okay? So that is gonna be some good heavy duty axles and tires that I can use for equipment hauling and uh, you know, just heavy, heavy loads on this, on this trailer. These are the original axles that came with it. And these are originally mobile home axles. All right, and they told me that Trailer Place, I had the trailer company here in town install those axles for me, but they said that these are 5,200 pound rated axles right here. I had put the uh, six lug hub adapters on there. You know, I took, I took the original mobile home wheels off, put these hubs on there, and uh, it's been, they've been working. So I wanted to go ahead and save these and save the rims and tires. Uh, Fernando had even said that he, that he, if I didn't have anything to do with them, that he wanted them. So I wanted to go ahead and hang on to them. So we've got 14,000 pound trailer right now, minus the uh, weight of the trailer. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go on an educated guess and say we've got maybe 11,000 pound payload. Once I'm through with all the modifications, I'm gonna go ahead and reweigh it so that I know what the trailer weighs. But when I weighed it before, it was uh, around 2,200 pounds. So it's gonna be a little bit more with the tires and axles, and then we're gonna redo the deck and I'm gonna add a little bit to it. So, I'm gonna, what I wanna do, obviously it needs a paint job, so we're gonna do that. Uh, the next phase is I'm gonna build some new finish for it. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take these off. These are some that I made up a long time ago when I built it, they're real thin. So we're gonna take these fenders off and I'm gonna build some heavy duty fenders out of channel iron and put on there. And the great thing about how this is done now is that you see the tires are below the deck level there. So what's gonna be really nice is I think I'm gonna be able to lower the fenders down. I'm gonna give, I don't know, anywhere from two to three inches there. So I'm gonna try to make the uh, fenders even with the deck so that these are not sticking up so trying to eliminate the fenders being in a way so that we will have more of a flat deck or an over deck trailer and I'm gonna go I'm gonna see about the, the deck going with the uh, rough cut lumber they said that the rough cut lumber is actually thicker it's supposed to be a true two inches so that'll bring this up a little bit there as well and then we'll drop the uh, fenders down to try to make the fenders kind of even with the top of the deck there so that these are not sticking up above that. But you can see they're all bent up. There was a blowout one time here. This got all bent up. So I did get a spare. I wanted to make sure that I had a good spare. So this is, these are the tires right here. They're Hercules 235-80 R16. And they've got, I believe it was 105 pounds of pressure. I, I read it on there earlier, 105 PSI. So my buddy, uh, Andrew of Blacksmith Tools, when I was talking to him about this, he told me to uh, go with floor, uh, 14 ply tires 
that the 10 ply tires he's had nothing but problems with having blowouts and 14 ply is the way to go so that's what i went with it was an investment this was expensive to get these tires and rims but i wanted to go ahead and take the advice of uh, somebody that's got my, a lot more experience with hauling than i do and uh, so i went ahead and invested the money there i felt the, the walls on these things i mean they, they got to be you know five eighths three quarter thick on the wall here's the old original these these rims i found at the uh, the pick and pull here in town and they come off of a chevy truck they're still good there's nothing wrong with them the tires uh, some of the tires need to be replaced this is a new tire here my uncle had borrowed it and he had a blowout and he so he had a brand new tire put on it that was the last one that i had put on it right there that one's not that old but these two right here are uh, dry rotted and uh, no good so we're going to give it a good paint job here's a little look at the electronics you know the electrical work so we've got a brand new plug on it now and we have the uh, proper breakaway system got the cable for the breakaway so just looking forward to uh, getting some uh, some more work done on this thing we're gonna this somebody put this on there i didn't put these but so once we do the deck i'm thinking about actually getting buying the angle iron and i'm gonna go ahead and wrap all the way around all four sides with the angle iron to protect the edges of the wood and uh, the guys fixed some of these some of these were rotted and busted out the little marker lights and they actually still had these down there in their inventory so they put some of those on there for me I think that's going to be about it for now. So once we get some more improvements done, next thing I want to do is the uh, fenders. So I'll show you how that's going to come along. I'll probably have uh, probably have Joe down at the welding shop help me with the fenders. He's got the material for that, and he could probably break those up and his break a lot easier. So I don't know. We'll see. If uh, he's busy, I might just get some material and make it myself. But they're going to be fully welded on here. I don't want them just hanging off like this. I want the uh, I want these welded on there, and then they're going to be heavy enough. Them I'm probably going to put a couple of D rings up here also, so that you you can have a you'll have a tie down point in this area there as well. Okay. So there you go. We'll talk more about this as I get some more work done on it. Okay, but real happy with it. I'm real happy with the deck height and. Uh, it's going to be a, a good trailer again to haul and move some heavy equipment. So I've actually got a machine that I'm going to go and pick up pretty soon with this trailer. And I'll show you that adventure whenever we get to it, okay? There was a couple things that I forgot to talk about that I meant to. So I wanted to mention these straps right here. These are the quick loaders. And I had way, way back when I was hanging out with Andrew at his place, I saw him using these. And I asked him where he got them. And these are available over at McMaster Car. So I've got actually four of them, and I believe they're like $57, $58. And they're awesome because all of the extra strap spools up on this shaft right here. So you don't have all that extra strap that you got to tie, tie up and, you know, do something with. It works really good. I don't know if I can uh, give you a shot here. No. I got to be able to kind of hold it somewhere. Let's see. There we go. You can see it un unwinding and then it just spring loaded so it pulls all the extra strap back in there so again the the, uh, the quick loader they've got them in they got them in this hook pattern they got them in the flat hook pattern and then they make them in a shorter version as well a little bit lighter duty this is 27 foot but they've got them in a smaller strap uh, 10 foot and six foot as well now you can see i've got that one hooked into the over the axles there awesome and then i was going to mention also that we've got all new springs hardware all the hangers and everything for these axles so all that stuff has been replaced all that stuff under there is all brand new so i'm starting to slowly work on a couple of the modifications for my trailer and it's actually going to start right here with my uh with my hitch or the uh insert i think you actually call it there so 
I'll begin by talking about where this come from. So I actually uh, built part of this. This piece right here, the actual insert piece, was something that I had uh, salvaged uh, for free. It was something that I don't even remember where it came from, but uh, I had it at the old shop, and it was originally uh, sold. With, it had the hit, uh, weight distribution system mounted on this thing for like a camper, and I didn't need that, so I just threw that away or scrapped it, and I built my own using this piece right there. So, so what we got is I've got these lynch pins right here that you can take out. And I use these bolts, three quarter bolts. I just bought some long ones and I cut the threads off and then drilled the hole for the, uh, the lynch pin. And uh, we got a strong pin right there. And I did it so that two of them line up. So this is the piece that I salvaged and used. Nice heavy duty solid steel. And then this is the piece that I actually made myself right here. So this was a solid piece of square stock. And that's the same material that I used a while back in a collaboration video whenever we made that precision toolmaker's vise. I used some uh, 4140. This is the same material out of that same piece of stock. I had uh, cut a piece off. You can see how it's all rusty and pity. pitted. <laughs> Pity. But... Um, that's how that material looked. And I've got a piece of this sitting over on my Victor lay too. You might see every now and then I keep it over against the uh, high low lever. So I took and cut a piece off that and I milled it so that it would fit on this two inch piece right here. I made it a precision fit. So it's got very, very little movement on there at all. And I just milled it. That was back when we had the Acura mill. The one I always used at motion. It was that same mill. And uh, then this piece right here was some three-quarter plate that I had torched out and uh, torched it so that it fit this tube and I just welded it on and I stick welded it. Put nice heavy beads on there. This was beveled too so I filled up the bevel on both sides and then capped it off with a uh, 7018. And that's it. So this is what I've always used. And then the ball, I don't even remember where I got this. It was another salvage piece. So this is the ball I've always used, two and five, and a 6,000 pound rating because it's got the one inch uh, thread on there. So I wanted to go ahead and upgrade to a uh, stronger ball that's got a higher load rating on it. And so I went ahead and picked up this guy right here. This is a new one that uh, says it's rated for 20,000 pounds. So we've also got the inch and a quarter thread on it there. So what we are gonna be doing is I'm going to drill this guy out. We're going to go ahead and just drill this so that the inch and a quarter thread ball will fit in there. All right, and then the other problem that poses is that I normally use, uh, I, I use this guy also. This is a one and seven eighths. This is for my small little utility trailer. So usually what I do is I always swap these balls out. So I believe what I'll do, uh, I haven't looked yet, but I'm going to see if they happen to sell a one and seven eighths with the inch and a quarter thread. And uh, if they don't, what we're going to do is just make a bushing that will stay with this right here that I can put in there and, and put and tighten up in the inch and a quarter hole. So that's the plan for that guy right there. So just a real simple mod. I may clean it up and repaint it too to make it look kind of fresh. So anyway, we'll go set it up in the middle and uh, drill us an inch and a quarter hole in this guy right there. Use my center point just to kind of quickly get the hole lined up. That'll put me real close right there. And we'll stick an indicator in there and find the center.
Here's a cutter that we'll use right here. This was one of my flea market scores. So inch and a quarter end mill with a 5-8 shank. Let's see if this little mill can handle it. Just gonna, we don't have a lot to do. I'm just gonna use my cut mill here. Before I take it out of there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run the table down and make sure that the, uh, the ball fits that hole good. Like it was machined for it. All right. I was just mainly concerned that it would be a little too small, but we've got enough clearance there that it slides in good. All right. I did a quick search on McMaster car and these uh, 1 and 7 8 balls are only listed having a uh, 3 quarter thread on there. So I don't know if they've changed the standardization or maybe McMaster car just doesn't have the ones with the 1 inch. But see this one is, uh, is a 1 inch thread right there. So I'm just going to make a bushing. We got a piece of tubing right here that's a 1 inch ID. Yeah, see it's already 1 inch ID. I just got to turn the OD down. It's 1 and 5 eighths right now. We'll turn down inch and a quarter, part of sleeve off. We'll just have a little bushing that will just keep on the ball so when I want to use it, we can uh, stick it on there. Place three quarters, so I'll just part it off just to just a shade under that. And we'll part it off, and then we'll chamfer uh, all four corners. That looks good right there.
All right, that should be it right there. Let's go make sure everything fits up right. I'll probably coat that down with never sees because I know eventually it's going to start rusting and probably get a little bit tight. I thought I gave it about five thousandths. That'll work right there. That's going to work good. So I just keep this ball under the back seat of my, the back of my truck under the under the back seat, and then whenever I use my uh, little trailer, I just swap the ball out. Cause I just I like using this. I have it, you know, being able to adjust the height that I need to, and uh, not have a bunch of separate uh, inserts to swap out. So there we go. There's that right there, and I'll start getting all this back together now. But we got some more projects to start on. I've got a um, I've got a toolbox that I bought that I'm going to mount on the tongue of the trailer as well. And I think I'm about to start on that next. I'll snug that again once I get it on the truck using that 18 inch adjustable wrench. I love this right here though. You can slide that anywhere you want. So with the, uh, the new axles, the new tires and rims on there, it raised it up a bit. So I actually got to bring it all the way to the very top to make the uh, trailer level now. But usually whenever I'm pulling my little trailer I'll bring it down here to the bottom so I just picked up this better built toolbox to that's gonna mount to the uh, tongue here got this locally from uh, a1 accessories they they uh, do trailer and truck parts up there and uh, they had this guy and I've been wanting to uh, pick me up one for a long time for this trailer so that I'll have a good place to store my straps and things whenever I'm uh, you know doing a haul so we're going to probably just uh, I'll lay out a couple or four holes on the bottom side and uh, drill those and then just uh, bring it back out here and transfer a punch onto the plate this is a quarter inch thick plate right here that I welded to the tongue so I'll probably drill and tap this plate right here and then just uh, bolt it in from the top okay so that's gonna be a nice addition I've wanted one of those for the longest time. We're finally getting this one. I will point out this right here is, um, I'm gonna leave this on here for now. I'm just gonna butt that thing all the way up against it and bolt it in. But this was a plate for a winch. One of those little cheapo winches that I got from uh, probably Harbor Freight years ago. It just mounts on there. But uh, I no longer have that winch, but I, I use it for this D-ring there as well. I'm going to be removing this once I redo this deck and I'm going to do something different. I'm probably going to have a big steel plate mounted on the front of this. I'm going to be putting another support in along right here and we'll have a different winch mount. I do want to mount a winch on this trailer, but we'll put us a big heavy steel plate right up here that's mounted into this front channel. We'll have us another support right across here that it'll be mounted to as well. So I, I was just going to point that out. That's what that was, but that's going to go away. All this will be going away. Gonna use some 3 8 bolts. I thought about using half, but I think half's a little bit big, so we'll just run some 3 8 in there. All right, 
we've got a position where we want it. I've got it equally centered both sides, and I will point out that my jack handle still works right there. It's uh, we got just enough clearance there. So I'm going to transfer punch those four holes, and I'll bring the mag drill out here, and we'll use that to uh, drill and tap those holes. Use that uh, transfer punch. Well, we got her mounted down on there and all four of my holes lined up perfectly. Bolted in good and rigid. That's gonna work well. I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt it and remove it. And the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and start wire brushing some of the scaly rust off. And especially on the front right here, I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, brushing some of my CRC rust converter on the front of this and uh, make it look a little bit more presentable on the front and uh, I may just go ahead and do the rusty areas anyway and maybe even the fenders just because uh, it might be a little bit before I can get to these fenders and I just want to make it look a little bit more presentable until I get there just try to make it look a little nicer going down the road getting ready for the first haul we got coming up uh, next week I'm just giving the uh, front of the trailer here a nice coat with the rust converter. 
it'll make it look a lot nicer. I wire brushed everything to get the scaly rust off. And uh, this will make it look like it's kind of been painted black. It'll look a whole lot better than that orangey rust color. And then uh, once I get to where, probably whenever I get to where I'm gonna be putting the new deck on, is where I'm gonna actually paint the entire trailer. Probably just go back black again. But, uh, and then once I do, this right here is a good primer coat for paint as well. I got a coat of the rust converter on the whole trailer. I went ahead and dusted off the, uh, the fenders and the back of the trailer as well. And while I was at it, I just went ahead and coated everything that was rusty just to try to make the thing look a little bit more presentable and a little bit more uniform instead of the uh, orangey rust popping out everywhere. So it's, it definitely looks a lot better, but I'm really excited about getting a uh, fresh paint job on this thing once we uh, take this off and uh, get ready to put the deck on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the, uh, the new toolbox mounted back up on here and we'll just, just about be done with what we're doing here. Alrighty, our little spruce treatment, making it look so much better. We've got our toolbox mounted up here now. Ready to uh, put my straps in there, my chains, have a good place to uh, keep it locked. I can't believe after all these years, I finally got one of them boxes on here. It's looking pretty good. So that's gonna be it for now. Next phase is gonna be replacing these fenders. Probably gonna go with some uh, 12 inch channel iron and uh, get those fabbed up and they'll actually be welded solid to the to the trailer so we'll do fenders and then from there probably go to a deck and then complete paint job yep all right that's it we'll see you guys later these are some more uh straps and things that i bought also from uh, mcmaster car that's where i've been uh, picking all this stuff up at so these are the uh the quick loader straps right there that uh, i had found out about from uh andrew over at blacksmith tools Last year I saw him using those and, and uh, I asked him where he got them. He said McMaster. So I uh, went ahead and bought me. I've got four of them now. And when I purchased these last two, I picked up these guys here as well. These are the smaller ones, uh, you know, not quite as heavy duty. And these are 10 foot long. So these are rated for 1100 pounds. But I just, I wanted some smaller ones to use also. So I got two of these just to see how they would do. But they work the same. They wind up the extra strap right there on the, uh, on the ratchet and then I got me some chains so I have me some new binding chains right here these are these are uh, from McMaster and it says made in USA on there somewhere I thought it did so anyway I got me some fresh chains and I've also got some of these guys right here these are called web sling protectors on the uh, McMaster car website let's see if I can get it open they got that velcro on there so these are used to uh, protect your piece that you're binding down and also to protect your uh, straps and chains. So you can put this around your chain. Well, that Velcro is tight. So you can put this around this strap right here, lay it in there. Then you've got some extra protection against tearing and on sharp corners and things. But this also serves as a padding on, uh, say, a say a machine we're moving machine and all you got is uh, you know a precision surface to uh, put something across and uh, this will help protect that okay or a paint job or whatever so I actually picked me up eight of these these are pretty cheap I think these are around twelve dollars a piece so I got me uh, got me eight of those I got the other the other four inside but anyway I just wanted to show that because it was in the video so these are some really cool straps right there and uh, I'd recommend picking those up. I believe these are around $57 for a McMaster car and uh, made in USA, good quality stuff.